Welcome to another episode of Public Works Update. I'm Shannon Austin, your host, and on today's show, we'll give you an update on five of the largest projects that we have can still going on in the city of Sioux Falls. So stay tuned. Our first project update is on the northeast part of the city at Benson Road and Interstate 229. And we have been out here for multiple times and it's starting to look like a diverging diamond, Talon. We welcome you to the show. So what is still remaining to be done? So they just finished up paving the northbound off ramp. That'll probably reopen in the next week, week or two. And then after that, they'll start working on the interchange islands. And once they complete that, the middle of October sometime, they'll start opening it as a diverging diamond, kind of one lane at a time. Okay. Kind of like we did on 41st Street to kind of ease people into it a little bit. So those islands that they're working on then, those would be the, the splitter islands, like to right. make, really yep. making it the diverging right, diamond? Right, exactly, okay. yep. But otherwise, all of the all of the actual paving is complete. All of, yeah, all of the paving, the road paving is complete. They still have to do some curb and gutter for the interchange islands. Okay. Uh, there's a little bit of sidewalk stuff left on the bridge itself, but for the most part, all of the all the paving is done for the project. Okay, so remind our folks again, um, on the 41st Street DDI, we had the pedestrian walkway in the middle of the bridge. Will, will it be the same way here? It will, yep. Okay. Yep. So, um, and then we have sidewalks on both sides. We do. Of the, okay, yep. okay, so there'll be plenty of pedestrian access through the area then. Yep. Okay, so uh, certainly that's great news. Possibly we'll see some traffic maneuver uh, changing in mid-October. So likely it will be open as a full DDI then before the snow flies. Yes, it will. They, they're they going to have it open as a partial DDI here in October, like I said, but the full project should be complete by the by the end of this year, November sometime. Okay, well that's good news. We've been out here a long time. There's been a lot of work to yep. do. So overall, has the project gone pretty well though? Yeah, it's been going really well. It's ahead of schedule. The actual final completion date was you know, June of next year. So we're well ahead of that schedule. And I think uh, people would be pleased by the, the progress we've made out here. Yeah, so. Very good. Okay, well thanks so much for your time today. Thank you. Well, we are here on Sycamore Avenue between Arrowhead Parkway and 6th Street, and we welcome Wes, who is our concrete expert out here. I am sure you've had a lot of calls on this project. <laughs> well, we're getting towards the end here. Yes. We're, we can see the, the light at the end of the tunnel, but it's it's been a, a challenge, but it's a really good project to yeah. restore the, the ride of the pavement here. So then talk to me a little bit about, so we had work done on 6th Street last year, and then the work on Sycamore this year, Are they were they the same project or two different projects? Um, it's similar work, but it's a separate project. We're just, you know, extending the, the work onto Sycamore and that last piece of 6th that we didn't do last year right by uh, the Washington High School. Okay. Um, the whole project is to uh, repair the bad parts of the concrete um, and then reseal those joints so we keep all the water and the chemicals out of the concrete um, so we can get a lot more life than out of the concrete. Okay, so um, as I travel on 6th Street, it also looks like, me, did you grind the surface yep. also on 6th Street? Yep, so before the project there, you really felt the thump thump at the joints mm -hmm. and that's just uh, the pavement moving over the past 30 years. Um, so now we are diamond grinding that pavement after we do the repairs to really make it a nice smooth ride. Okay. Um, you know, hopefully for the next 30 years. So um, interestingly enough, I, I just drove on the west side, I drove on Kiwanis Avenue between 12th Street and I think it was 26th Street. And we had done similar diamond grinding on a project out there probably about four or five years ago, yep. right? Yep. And that rides still really well. So this. Have we been happy with what we've seen so far yeah, using we've that? Yeah, we've been happy with it. It does, uh, you know, it costs a little more money than not doing it, obviously, but um, the performance we've seen in the ride, we think it's worth it. Okay. So I'm sure our, you know, our school partners with, we have Washington High School folks traveling. Has it been pretty bad during the AM and PM peaks or has it been manageable? I think everybody's been managing okay. There's definitely been um, delays during the peaks. Um, but the great thing now is we're done on 6th Street. Yeah. Um, we're done north of 6th Street on Sycamore. So we just really have um, the sawing and the resealing on, uh, on Sycamore. Um, the diamond grinding is all done. So we're really, you know, down into the last couple of weeks. Um, October 11th is our completion date. Okay. And we think we'll be done um, by then or before. Okay. Um, another interesting thing I wanted to mention is we're using pore shield on the joints. 
So after we clean out those the old concrete joints, um, before we reseal them up, we spray them with a material that soaks into the concrete, hmm. um, and that uh, that also prevents the water from getting in in the future. So hopefully, really just prolong the life of the joints in the concrete. Is that something new? Uh, we've been trying it off and on on projects the last few years, but it's uh, it's definitely a new product overall. But um, the research is showing that it's it's worthwhile and it's really not that expensive to do. So does that take the place then of that black rubbery stuff that you see sometimes after rain events? Nope, we still we still do the black. Um, the the hot tar is still a sealant. Okay. Um, you know that really seals the joint, but what we're spraying on with the pore shield gets into the concrete, so it's kind of a two a two step sealing. Okay. So then, with the work that we're doing here on Sycamore, will we have to do the same thing like what we did on East 10th Street, which was a large impact for our drivers this summer? Will we still have to overlay then on no, Sycamore? No, no. The concrete on this this segment is good enough. Where okay. we really hope that we can get, you know, another 10 to 15 years before we have to consider an overlay. Great. Um, maybe even more. Well, that's just great. So my, my ride to work is a lot smoother <laughs> now. So thank you for that. Yes. <laughs> all right. Is there anything else that, so you said mid-October, we hopefully all the orange barrels will be gone? Yeah, we'll be wrapping it up. We're happy to be, be out of the area and we're getting everything around, uh, you know, Veterans Parkway and Arrowhead Parkway project, you know, nice and smooth for the detour routes Wonderful. for next year. Great. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for your time today. You bet. Well, we are out here on Veterans Parkway between 41st Street and 57th Street. And we welcome to the show Sam Cotter from Harder yeah, Green. Hi. We haven't talked to you for a while, right. uh, but we are on a sanitary sewer project, which is certainly your expertise. So if I'm traveling along Veterans Parkway, I see that there's a really big pipe. Right. So tell us a little bit about that project. Yeah, behind us you can see we have, this is a 36 inch uh, polyethylene pipe. And so that is going to be carrying uh, part of the sanitary sewer collection system. And so it's connecting pump station 240, which is on the east end of 57th Street, almost okay. to the Big Sioux River. And then uh, that pump station is pumping it north about 10 mile pipeline um, when it's all said and done up to the treatment plant. So that's, that's a big corridor. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long ways and it'll be conveying um, a lot of the uh, sewer collection network for the city. And um, right now, pump station 240 pumps through a 16 inch line. So this 36 inch will really increase the capacity of that just to plan for future development. Because okay. that, that pump station collects a lot of uh, the south side of Sioux Falls, especially along 57th Street and, and locations south of there. Okay, so then how, so we, I believe we did the original uh, force main and pump station back in the early 2000s. Correct. So how far into the future will this pump or this pipe get us? Right, um, you know, right now um, with the current pump station, um, we're looking at uh, like a 40 year planning horizon, okay. but um, some of that planning includes uh, some intermediate pump stations as well that are okay. planned for the future. Okay, so there's two pipes behind us. Is it an open cut? Is the contractor gonna open cut the entire the entire segment? Or? Some of this is open cut. Um, in fact, the area that you see here will be open cut, but uh, just on the other side of the camera, there's a directional drill operation where okay. they are drilling, boring the pipe, um, and that's about 900 feet long, where they oh. will actually pull one of these pipes into the hole uh, so it doesn't disturb some of the storm sewer facilities that are there. And then you see far behind us is 41st Street, mm -hmm. and all those major intersections, 41st, 33rd, and then 26th, those are all uh, horizontal bores. Great. So no disruption to the traffic going on 41st. Wonderful. So the yeah. so the one that they're working on now is, is there's there's a pedestrian underpass. So Correct. that's why they're going under. Okay, yep. very good. So this project um, has been a multiple phase year right. or pr over many years. So talk a little bit about, you know, why did we do that and how many years it's been going on? And right, yeah. I mean, the planning for this, well, it started years years before my involvement, but yeah. um, we've been lucky enough to be involved since about 2019 with some upgrades to that pump station and an equalization basin. Okay. Um, and so I think in 2021, uh, a section of this pipe was installed along 57th between Veterans Parkway and Six Mile Road. And um, and now this portion as well as a, a north portion with this, another contractor is going on this year into next year. Okay. And then there's a section uh, between 26th Street and Arrowhead Parkway that will uh, be bid in the future as well. And so that that will have to be coordinated with the Arrowhead and Veterans intersection exactly. that we're planning for next year. So. Right. All right, well, very good. Well, that's a, that's a big project. It <laughs> is, yeah. So uh, talk, 
more specifically then about the side path or, or rec trail. So is that right. going to be closed now for the duration or? There are portions of the bike trail that will be closed um, one mile stretch at a time as they progress with the pipe. Uh, they'll kind of leapfrog that bike okay. path closure along the way. So if you're out on the trail like I was a couple weeks ago, you might encounter some uh, path bike path closed signs. Um, so just encourage the public to avoid using those stretches as they're closed uh, just to stay safe with the construction equipment. Okay. So then uh, last question regarding the actual impacts to Veterans Parkway. Uh, will there be any lane closures or is it just mainly? There's no lane okay. closures planned. Um, right next to us there's a shoulder that's closed okay. but no lane closures are planned okay. on Veterans Parkway. All right. Well, maybe we'll have to come back early next year to see how right. to check on your progress. Absolutely. Thanks so much for your time. Yeah, appreciate it. Well, we're out here on South Veterans Parkway between Western Avenue and Cliff Avenue, our project for the year, most popular project for the year. Uh, Pat Dressen, welcome back. Thank you. So, all the concrete is down, looks like all of the asphalt is down. What, what, it's, what are they working on? Yeah, so right now the contractors work, they'll make their last uh, barrier wall pour today. Uh, once that's done, they still got to uh, pressure wash it and, and paint it and do all that type of stuff. So there's work on going over there at the barrier wall. Which is uh, where, by Cliff or by Minnesota? Yeah, so the barrier wall goes essentially almost from Cliff through the bridge and just a little bit past the bridge at 85th Street. Okay. The uh, the contract is also working on the concrete colored colored banding on the, in the median. Okay. Uh, they're just about done with that and then we got to get all the landscaping done in, in those medians. Uh, down here on Western Avenue, they just started striping today. Uh, getting uh, medians put in, Excel Energy's down here getting ready to do some power pole work. Okay. So Lots a lot of activity of, still. A lot of stuff behind the curb, so it makes it look like it's done, but it's not done yet. Right, exactly. <laughs> all right, so, um, but uh, otherwise, all of the actual concrete work and paving is, is complete. Right, okay. the actual streets are done. Okay, so pavement markings, of course, those have to be done before it starts to turn cold, right? Absolutely. Yeah, there are weather restrictions on the pavement okay, markings. Okay, so there'll be there'll be a lot of work being done then on the on the pavement markings. Absolutely. Okay. It'll take them a little while to get all them in. Okay. Well, that's good. Um, have you heard any feedback from anybody on the roundabout? Yeah, you know, all the feedback we hear from the roundabout is very positive. Uh, Great. Aesthetically, it's very pleasing to the eye, and I think uh, functionality, it's working very well up there for oh, the school. Oh, that's good to know. So that'll be... So likely the portion of Western plus the roundabout, do you think we'll open Western up sooner than the actual Veterans Parkway? I do. It'll probably be a week or two that we can hopefully get Western Avenue open before Veterans Parkway itself. That's our goal. You know, we're trying to get that open as fast as we can for the yeah. school, but there's just, you know, a lot of stuff behind the curve yeah. we got to get done here. And that's that's probably the most important stuff because that's the stuff that makes it look the best, too. Right, so, right. So we'll definitely be back then probably sometime in October to check on your progress. But if, you know, if there if there is an opening, we'll definitely want to let the school and the parents know and stuff, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay, well, just kind of a quick update. Appreciate your time today. Absolutely, anytime. All right. Well, our last stop today is on a road not so well traveled by some of our Sioux Falls folks, but certainly uh, very familiar with the City of T. And we welcome to the show Ben Schultz, who is the City Engineer for the City of T from HDR Engineering. So, Ben, welcome. Thank you very much. It's good to have you here on this exciting project. Um, we haven't been out here. No. So let's talk a little bit about just the overall scope of the project first. Yeah, you bet. So um, this project as a whole begins over at Heritage Parkway, or more people commonly know it as TLS Road, mm -hmm. uh, just north of the city of T, about one mile. And it extends uh, eastward toward the interstate. And the intent is to get this road ready for a future interchange that will be built at the inter uh, interstate itself. Uh, so we're a little preemptive trying to get this ready so when the interchange is there, people have something to drive to. Great. So we are on Sundowner Correct. right now, and so we go about a thousand feet north and south of the actual 85th intersection, right? Yes. And then um, talk a little bit about Sundowner north and south, because there is still gravel, right? Yeah, exactly. So Sundowner predominantly between T and Sioux Falls is largely a gravel road. It's a township road for now um, that's going to turn into a city street for both T and Sioux Falls in the near future. Uh, so the intersection here that we're standing in is the major part of that for sure. Um, the, the gravel portion between uh, here and south toward T will be taken on by T and probably constructed in the next one or two years as a actual city street. And Sioux Falls, I know, has plans to do something moderately similar uh, in about that same time frame. Great. So, yeah. Okay. So um, let's talk about the section then of 85th Street 
between Heritage Parkway and uh, Sundowner. So will that be just a two-lane rural section, no curb and gutter, or will it will it look like an urban street? Yeah, it's going to be sort of a hybrid a little bit. Uh, another special thing to add is at the intersection of TLS Road or Heritage Parkway, whatever you refer to it, that'll be a roundabout, actually. Ah, a, single, a single lane roundabout, not a double. So people <laughs> hopefully can navigate it easily. Um, and then, yeah, the, the corridor, that one-mile segment between there and where we are again, is mostly going to be a, th it'll be a three-lane road, but more similar to, like, uh, a rural highway. Uh, so okay. there won't be curb and gutter. There will still be ditches beside the road. Um, and then about a, not the other half of that will just be two lanes. And that's just really because there isn't a lot of development adjacent to the road yet. Okay. Um, both T and Sioux Falls are still growing toward that a lot. So we didn't want to bite off more than we could chew and manage it financially in a, in a way that the city can grow into it and then improve the road after when okay. needed. So remind me again, um, so the city of Sioux Falls will grow down 285th Street and then T will grow up to 85th Street. So 85th Street is that kind of like that growth boundary? Yes, absolutely. We have a race to 85th Street to get there. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> um, but yeah, both communities are going in those respective directions. Okay. Uh, T has some other infrastructure nearby here that you might see in some of the other footage um, that we, we are pretty close at the moment. Sioux Falls, again, is growing to the south, like you mentioned. Um, there's a lot of activity with a lot of subdivision developers in the area. We know it's just a matter of when they want to pull the trigger to make it all happen. Okay. So looking forward now, between now and the end of the year, what what can we expect to be open to traffic out here? Yeah, you bet. So the intersection of Sundowner Avenue and 85th that we're standing in right now is anticipated to be open to traffic by hopefully middle or end of October of this year. Um, and there still won't be an interchange to drive to, so there's not much to go uh, eastward at the moment, but north and south you'll be able to as you know zoom through here please don't zoom too much <laughs> um and then the road from sundowner here back west toward uh tls road that's going to be restored to gravel just for now okay uh so people can still drive on it but we're going to pave it with asphalt next year okay and the roundabout that's over at the tls road intersection will be built next year so uh for commuters they're using tls road at the time uh they're going to notice we've built a temporary road around where the roundabout's going to go. So that way, next spring, when we start working on the roundabout, the interruption to north and south traffic on TLS is hopefully not significantly impacted. Everybody can drive great. around the construction zone. That's a great idea. Great, great, great. So I um, have to give a shout out to our uh, T partners because this project is a jointly funded project between City of T and City of Sioux Falls. And so yes. we've been so great to work with you guys. Um, and just maybe give us an idea when that interchange is going to start well we're hoping the work will start sometime next year very good um and i suspect it'll probably be about a two-year project more than likely yeah. um sioux falls is a partner in that as well as t but we have, there's a lot of other entities that are involved with the design and what, what will be the construction so. wonderful so a lot of changes happening because yes. we were we certainly have the tall grass improvements on the on the east side and and 85th street so we're we're going to have that interchange surrounded by the time we're done with this project oh yeah lots <laughs> going to change still well thank you so much for your time today thank you very much shannon well that does it for today's show as you can see there are a lot of projects that are just about ready to open for the to keep track of those opening dates please stay tuned to SiouxFalls.gov construction. Until next time, I'll see you on the streets.